Welcome to How Much for a Garage in 2021. Today I'm going to walk through the, all the steps from, from uh, setting up the forms through finishing the roof and the doors and all the finish work. Um, I also want to talk about what we do not do as in the, in the contract price. Um, we're also, for a contract price, we're going to guarantee our price for 30 days. Uh, last year and in years past, that was, I, I, I might not raise my prices for two years, uh, but this year it's just so volatile, or this past year it's been so volatile that we're having to do that. You can see here we're setting up the forms, uh, making sure with the transit that everything is perfectly flat. Then um, we will put in grade stakes, we'll square it, make sure the uh, corner to corner it's right on. We'll put plastic down. We dig a trench around the perimeter to um, uh, thicken that footing all the way around. So after we put the plastic down, we put half inch rebar, a mat of it, two feet across, uh, two feet spacing, uh, both directions. And then we tie it off with twist ties. So what we, what, what we do not include is the earthwork or what, that you can see around here. Um, that's by others that do that. We, we ask for a, a, a minimum of a 12 inch compacted gravel base on dry ground underneath that. Uh, we don't like to see clay or anything like that. Uh, that tends to move the concrete, so that would be bad. Concrete, we pour a 3000 PSI mix. Um, depending on the, the time of year, we might use an accelerator to speed that up if it's going to turn cold quickly. This was a beautiful day when we poured this one. Um, so we, we power screed, what, I think what you just saw on there, uh, to get the initial smoothing. Then uh, in the middle, we're putting a, a floor drain. So that'll have, we'll, we'll go around with a two by four <laughs> and make sure that it's draining to the, to the drain. Um, then after that, we'll uh, finish bull floating if we have to, and then we'll get on it with a power trowel uh, as soon as it's set up enough. Usually from the time we finish pouring till we power trowel, in the summer or warmer months, it's uh, maybe three hours and then we're on it with the trowel and we'll have to run over it two or three times uh, to get that finish, finish grade. You probably can see that we don't have any anchor bolts in there. We use uh, what we call wedge anchors and we'll, I'll show you those in a little bit. Wall framing in the shop, we, it would be the next step. We build the walls, two by fours, pressure treated bottom plate, and then the, the rest is all spruce, two by fours. Um, whenever there's somebody new working with me, I always go over safety procedures on how to nail. Uh, we, what we call a six inch rule. We, we never nail closer than six inches to our hand because uh, that's painful. We put three nails in a, in a two by four wall because going over the road, we get a lot of, a lot of bouncing with the frost heaves or whatever there is. And we found that that third nail makes a huge difference so that the thing, the uh, walls don't loosen up in the process. We use two by 10 headers doubled with filler in between for strength. We'll build all the wall sections and we'll stack them on the trailer for delivery. Uh, it's always a big day when we go to on site to deliver uh, the wall panels. That's the day when we put it up, it just looks like we did a lot. And by well, actually we do, but we've done a lot ahead of time before we even show up as far as building the walls. Um, a little side note, two by four studs, two by four eight footers are 553 right now. Uh, last spring they were $3 and something, 310, 315. And that's across the board with the rest of the dimension lumber uh, proportionately. Um, OSB is still, for uh, 7 16 it's, I think, over $30 a sheet. Uh, 5 8 CDX that we tip quite often use on the roof just went up $4 in the past two weeks to $44, I think it is. Um, you can see here, there we level it. We've snapped the line all the way across. We do that all the way around. 
so that we have a nice straight line when we go across there. Um, that way when we put siding and so on going up, we have a nice straight line to go and it uh, gives a, a nice line across for the siding. So you can see we're putting OSB up on the, on the back. We use that to secure our first truss to. Um, it's a really, really good way to do that. The, uh, you can see we're putting anchor wedges in here, pound those in, then we tighten down those nuts and it's, it's just like a regular anchor bolt, except it's easier to put in for us uh, after we've set the walls. So you can see trusses going on. Um, they go pretty quickly. It's maybe um, an hour or two putting those up and securing them. We use uh, roof truss spacers. They're a metal bracket that we use, we put on. Uh, we take those on off after we've put the first course of plywood. Then we put roof wrap, staple that on in getting prepared for uh, roofing. Uh, after we get the roof wrap on, we'll put um, drip edge. But first we, we typically, we'll try to do the uh, fascia all the way around. That's the white, typically it's coil stock that we'll use. Uh, right here you can see we're putting on the trim, the F and the J channel. Uh, we'll do that all the way around the, the roof. And this is the fascia that we put on. Put, um, we'll bend that like five inches and an inch. So you get, the coil stock comes two feet wide, so we get four rips uh, of fascia out of one, uh, one cut. So we'll bend that on the metal brake in the shop. It's kind of fun when you see that going on. You start to see color and it just gives, starts to give it that finished look. So we have drip edge on. Now we're ready to do, to do the roofing. We screw the roofing on. Um, we put the screws about four feet apart going up. Uh, the fewer screws, the better. And yet you need enough screws to make sure it doesn't fall, the, the roof doesn't blow off. We don't want to have that happen. Um, we screw on the flat. The reason being if in the winter, we get quite a bit of snow up this way in the winter. So if you're using a snow rake to pull the snow off, it doesn't catch on each one of those screws if you put it on the rib. So that's worked real well for us. They have rubber washers in there uh, that, that um, suck down really tight to the roof, between the roof and the screws so you don't get any leaks. Then we move on to vinyl siding. We've got, we put a starter strip all across the bottom. Uh, when we put on siding, we snap it in, make sure that uh, it's snug. We pull it up just enough so that it's not drooping. Pull it up, put a nail in, you don't nail it tight, you leave it loose for expansion contraction, it moves. One 12 foot panel will move as much as an inch in uh, between summer and winter. So you have to overlap to cover that. So siding is about 85 to $90 per square, per 100 square feet of siding now, uh, depending on which one, which what kind of siding you can get. We bought some last year that was over $400 a square foot. It was a, a special, special vinyl with an insulation backer. Um, so we put that on. The windows are vinyl. They have a built-in J channel. So the windows come right in there. We trim around the garage doors with metal. And then we put J channel around that. And the siding comes into that. And it gives it a really, really nice finished look as far as uh, the exterior. Siding is done. Then we're on to the garage doors. These are nine by seven garage doors with one row of glass. And you can put them either on the third panel or the fourth panel. Some people, if they put it on the fourth panel, they just want, want it for uh, natural light, but don't want people looking in. Some want it on the third, third one so they can look out and see who's uh, coming up the driveway. <laughs> So uh, these doors are insulated and they have a metal skin on the inside. Um, so after the, uh, after the garage doors are done, we can now see the exterior. That will be the finished product. Um, we'll just take a walk inside in a minute and see what 
uh, what it looks like inside. You can get an idea of the how big it is. That's 24 by 24, two car, uh, eight foot ceiling. Uh, we put a, a, a spacer, truss spacer, right up the middle um, to space the, the trusses exactly two feet apart going through there. So um, this year, the, uh, the price for a 24 by 24 two-car ranch style garage with everything that I just showed you is going to be $19,975, I think it is, um, for everything that I showed you, not including excavation or permits. Um, we will guarantee that price for 30 days. Uh, I'll, I'll update the pricing on the website, uh, typically probably the first of, the, of each month to make sure we're staying current. Typically when, we, when I talk with a homeowner about a garage, we'll, as far as finances, what we'll go over is a payment process. It's a little bit flexible. Typically I go uh, with three, three payment schedules. The first, first third would be when, uh, before we show up, before we start. So that gives us working capital at the start to uh, go out and per start purchasing materials, labor to uh, do the work and so on. After we get the uh, plywood sheathing on the roof, we get the next third. That way it, it will allow us to continue working, which is always an exciting thing. And then the final third will be at the end. After we're done we've, and we've done a checklist and the homeowner is happy, which is the most important thing. We sweep up the floor, clean up, move out, and, and they pay us and both, both parties are happy. Um, that's how it typically works. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe, hit that like button, make any comments if you'd like. So we'll have the next one coming out in a few days on well, the next one will be on probably a um, salt box style. It'll be the type that has a steep shed roof on the back, or shallow, I'm sorry, shallow pitch on the back, steep one on the front with a little bit bigger overhang. And we'll talk about that uh, next video. Thank you.